No tea, no wine, no shade. It's my two cents. Now sit. Welcome, welcome, welcome to an all new episode of My Two Cents in a Sip podcast. I am your host, Yvonne Demis Yaya, and yes, we're here with an all new episode, guys, episode 18. In this episode, we're going to be discussing women in business with the emphasis on black women in business, uh, the rise, the fall, and the revamp of a business. We're also going to have a special guest, a business connoisseur woman, coming on the show later on uh, that's very special to me to discuss her methods of the rise, the fall, and the revamping of a business. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Before we get into all of that, you guys know that you can reach out to me um, through my social medias, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Message your girl, Yvonne Miss Yaya. You can also reach out on the message board of the podcast on Spotify. You can send in your random advice question, or you can answer a random advice question anonymously or not. Um, also, My Two Cents in a Sip podcast is streaming on all available platforms for podcasts, guys. So, Make sure you tune in where you get in, where you fit in, okay? And we also have subscriber episodes, so go ahead and subscribe. I think it's a dollar ninety nine or a dollar fifty uh, to get those subscriber episodes as well. Support your girl and the podcast. That's how we do in business, okay? No tea, no wine, no shade. Make sure you guys stay tuned. Again, reach out to me on the website on the contact tab if you have any questions or if you need any advice all right guys let's get into this women in business the rise the falls and revamping uh, your business we're going to get into the challenges that women face and not just women, put the emphasis on black women. Uh, but when it comes to starting your own business, I have done my research and from Forbes.com and Essence.com. Just go ahead and put those in there, uh, my sources. But women in general starting businesses, it's about 30% population worldwide of women starting their own businesses. 10% white women, about 17 to 20% black women uh, starting their own businesses. And they face challenges because one, their gender, all right? And for black women, two, is their gender and race, two challenges. So, you know, guys, just being a woman, it's really tough, period. No race intended, you know? Um, but when it comes to business, we do have to like toughen up. That's what I like to say. Cause you know, we always like to say we're strong and things like that. Uh, no, I don't like to use the word I'm strong at all. Okay. I don't have any muscles. I, I mean, I have muscles, but I'm, I'm not working out or bench pressing or anything like that. So I'm not going to say that I'm strong. Okay. But, um, I like to say I'm creative, talented, um, intelligent, and very tech savvy, I like to say, because I am. But when it comes to running a business, we need to be a little bit more tougher because it's a lot of different parts of running a business. And according to Essence, um what black women face when starting a business is basically financial resources. We don't have enough money to run our business or to get it off the ground or to hire people to help us uh, with our business. That's what, you know, the lack in the black business, black woman businesses. And then once we get too stressed out, some of us just stop the business and go ahead and work for someone. Now, the 
jobs that are making the six-figure salaries out there now are tech companies, cybersecurity, you know, things like that, um, computer type. And with the COVID pandemic, with the shutdown, and with this AI that's starting to develop, um, it's really tough for women in general to go ahead and plant their seeds in the business field. Okay, so Essence surveyed about a thousand employed people. 55% white, 15% were black, 17% Latino, um, and 12% were Asian. Um, 1% preferred not to answer. So, 51% were men, and 49% of that were women. And the top challenges that women reported facing in the entrepreneurship was a lack of job security, and significant worry about creating a solid business plan, like something that's really going to excel because we, I feel like we don't believe in ourselves. And it's not that we don't believe in ourselves, ladies, it's that we don't believe that people believe in us as much as we believe in ourselves. If you got that, no tea, no wine, no shade. So that's what I feel like. I feel like our people may not purchase from us. And if our people are not going to purchase from us, what's going to make another race purchase from me? Um, if my own people don't purchase from me um, and let their other races of friends or colleagues or peers that they went to school with or work with know about my services or, you know, what I do. It's never going to spread that word over into the other races if my race don't get it from me. So I think that's one of the things that we face. That's my two cents on the matter. Um, also, according to Essence and Forbes.com, you know, how they feel about women and the pressures um, of running a business, keeping a staff, and having to compete against AI and all the men with that um, business mind state. So we definitely have to get tougher. Um, we have to delegate like a boss, act like a boss, um, measure our time, make sure we get our rest, uh, set back, you know, don't overwork ourselves. Um, we deserve a break. We deserve, if we know we've been working 17 days in a row and we still haven't met the goal but we need a rest. We have worked 17 days in a row. Take a break, sis. Sit down. And if they can't appreciate that, you need to appreciate that because you deserve that. No tea, no wine, no shade. It's tough out there running a business. Uh, it's tough out there when your business fail. And it's very tough when you're trying to get back in there. But... The best thing to do is learn from your failures and learn from your mistakes. That's why you do that. I would rather fail so I can learn how to get back up and not do what I did before that caused me to fail. Okay? So, like I said, we have a mogul, a business savvy woman that's going to come here and discuss the rise, the fall, and the revamp of business um, and the way she does it and how we should do it as women, you know, in battling depression and anxiety along with running a business. So stay tuned, guys. And now for our marketing moment. Our marketing moment comes from an all new affordable luxury wig company, Love Me Hair. That's L U V M E Hair. This brand is a new brand of all natural human hair wigs. They have a site wide sale of $70 off. And right now, for Valentine's Day, 
They have a 60% off sale. Make sure you check out my link in the dashboard and get your discounts and deals with Love Me Hair. Affordable luxury wigs, all natural hair wigs. They have long, short, textured, curly, straight. Uh, they have styles that have $70 off, $80 off. They have coupon codes for $20 off, $45 off. Make sure you go ahead and check out lovemehair.com. And guys, again, make sure you click on my link to get those deals. And thank you for our marketing moment. No wine, no shade. It's my two cents. Now I'm sick. All right. Welcome back, guys. I am bringing you a mogul in my eyes, an entrepreneur here to discuss finding independence as a woman, starting a business, failing, and pivoting back to revamping. I'm here to bring you Miss Cynthia Gooding. And just to give you a little bit about Miss Cynthia Gooding, multi Entrepreneur, having established eight businesses, currently running five. She is the queen of functionality. In 2006, she started an award winning plant based skincare company called Asana Life, Anasta Life, I'm sorry, a luxury vegan brand, okay, filling the void for safe and effective vegan options that were safe for your whole family. In 2010, she opened Serenity Wellness Studio, a healthy lifestyle consortium, a wellness spa, where the mission was to support, collaborate with health, wellness, and body work. Miss Cynthia Rump Gooding is an alumni of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program, the Baltimore ICIC Program, and Women's Leadership at E. Cornell University. She also runs an independent Airbnb's business as well as a Toro independent car rental service. And above all of that, she is working on her current projects, which is an airport concessions, wind and energy consulting company, helping airports build their boutique or store brand businesses, if I say that correctly. Mm -hmm. Most of all, she is my lovely aunt. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Miss Cynthia Rump Gooding. Hi, everybody. Hey, Nisi Poe. Hey, Welcome to my Two Cents in a Sip podcast. All right, so let's get into this. What can you say to the women out there are, that, you know, have probably started a business before COVID, might have failed at that business, and right now are in process of trying to revamp possibly not revamping at all because you know they're going through anxiety or just not knowing how the world is changing so fast like me okay millennials out there that are used to change and things changing so much but are now stuck so what would you say about that finding independent I know this may sound very cliche but whenever you start a business um, you'll often hear people say you know what is your why Right. Mm -hmm. So when you said the skincare, I had eczema, but I was a still exists. There's other people with eczema. There's other people that love smell goods that wanted to be safe. And so for that consumer, I'm necessary. And so no matter what business it is that you start, if your why is very strong and very relevant, you'll keep going. Because some of the people we see win, it's not the best. We, we all know that. Mm -hmm. But they just they kept going. Yes. Yeah. Finding your why. All right. So in women that's facing depression and things like that and might not have no one to go to to let them know about how to start a business or, you know, where they can go or do they need an LLC? Do they need a sole proprietorship or like how can you break down starting the business? So whether you have LLC or, I mean, uh, whether you have depression or you're super happy every day or you have anxiety or, or a mood disorder, the one thing every business should be aware of is, is themselves and not just a mental health self, uh, a physical self, 
um, an attitudinal self because what that will do, being aware, okay, is drive you to look for the solution to that. There's been government programs like SCORE and SBA that explain in detail and sometimes with physical in-person assistance how to start a business from A to Z. Absolutely free, have always been there. What I find the biggest challenge is Mm -hmm. people are great visionaries. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, this is great. Oh, don't we need one of those? But the execution is where we fail or the consistency in the execution. So SBA has this information. They have printouts. So you can take it with you and check it off, get the name, get the trade name, establish the bank account, you know, get my EIN. All these things are spelled out, printable in steps. You can even go to score and get a mentor to meet with you once a month. But if you don't execute it, none of that matters. So you could be happy, depressed, anxiety, and mm. do it all, but do it. Mm. And that I love that. That solves both of those questions. Score for the mental health and SBA for your business. Just get no, score done. is um a mentor, a mentor that will meet with you once a month. Okay, but that's still mm-hmm. mental health. You have a guidance. You, you definitely do. That can go yeah. through that can walk you through it. So you and that will relieve some of that depression. You're not alone. And definitely the anxiety. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I love that. And SBA for your business. So you that everything you need is right there with SBA when it comes to starting your business, whether it's LLC, sole proprietorship, uh, partnership, it will all be there. And last but not least, failing at a business and then pivoting. There is not a successful, successful entrepreneur alive or dead that hasn't failed a business. <laughs> Not one. Mm. You don't even learn enough rat in success. You ever heard the notion that people um, born with a silver spoon will never own one again? Mm. And it's because somebody who is born without works real hard to get it and keep it. So if you start a business that goes flawless and effortless, how do you grow? How, How are you stretched? There is lessons in those valleys of failure. Mm-hmm. You learn when it was happening, when you were on your way down, and when you was pushing back up. So if everything go, goes perfectly, you're probably not that good of a business owner. But you have places like SCORE and SBA to work you through. Yeah, they, they'll walk you through it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. So I thank you so much for that. Those are some great tips in our hot topic today with women in business and mental health and facing those fears through depression and anxiety and getting those business started. Because like right now, women are running the world in entertainment, business, music, like women are at the top. So it's our time to get in and shine and uh, leave nothing behind. That is true. Well, I thank you so much for that, Auntie Miss Cynthia Gooding. Also, wanted to ask you. All right, so now we're going to get into our random advice question. Because you know here at My Two Cents in a Sip, we give it to you with no tea, no wine, no shade. (laughs) That's it. Take my sip, okay? So we have random advice questions from women um, and men that asks questions about women's situations, couple situations, women issues, or things that they're facing in life. And they're random questions that I've never read before. I've never seen them. And I like to answer them live and right off the top of my head and give you that advice, not advice that I've set on and researched or anything about. I just like to give it to you raw. So I want to ask you a random advice question. Um, and see what you say. I know I had my mom up here um, a few episodes back, and whew, so I know you have six. So, <laughs> oh, so okay. So this question, get it out of our cup, entitled "I Don't Give a Sip," and it reads, "Whoa, okay. I have been sleeping with my boyfriend, his dad, and cousin. Went to the doctor." 
and I have an STD. Who am I to tell that I have it? I love them all and don't want to lose them. Them all. If you're yeah. sleeping with them, sleeping with they, she, she should said, tell every person. I'm not even going to say she. I'm sorry because I don't know if it's a she or he. But at the oh, end, okay. I don't want to. Yeah, they should all. tell all their partners. It's just, it's, um, it's the human <laughs> thing to do. It's the responsible thing to do. It's the um, prevention from someone hurting someone else. You just have to be, if you're old enough to tango, you got to be able to take what comes with that. So. Tell everybody. She don't have to have a group session. My okay. God. But they definitely <laughs> should tell everyone. Talk about a group session. Okay. Yeah. That is some that's a reality show right there. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Wow. I don't know who this person was. Now it got me thinking about all of them. Like, who is this? Don't do it. Don't even try to figure I, out who it was. I'm, you might hurt yourself. I'm just glad we yeah. gave that gave our they, advice. Yes. That's the advice. Well, Absolutely. Okay. You don't have to tell them at the same time. Pull them to the side whenever you get them to the side. Okay. Yeah. Whenever yeah. your rotation <laughs> fills in. Yeah. Okay? Right. Clearly, there's a rotation schedule here. Yeah. So, yeah. Whenever that happens, uh, she, it's her responsibility. Yes. Tell to, them. To okay. tell the person. I'm sorry. I keep saying her. It's their responsibility. Yes. We have to stop saying that because. The options have grown. Yeah. All right. Well, I thank you so much for answering that, answering that random advice question. And I appreciate you so much for handling our hot topic for today. Welcome to My Two Cents in a Sip. I know you'll be back again. That's right. Random advice and some more business knowledge. I know you're so busy and you got to go. Uh, probably get on another conference call. <laughs> but um Thank you so much. Uh, did you want to let anyone know where they can find you or get any tips on um, anything from you? Well, I, um, I am on social media as Fashion Spa House. That's my brand. Um, my coaching company is the Functionality Expert. Mm -hmm. And I just want anybody who is contemplating starting a business to ask themselves, am I feeling a need? a niche or a void and why am I so motivated to do so you will need to lean on that answer several times throughout your entrepreneurial career because when money is low and customers are gone that why is going to keep you going happy and motivated no tea no why no shade thank you so much Hey guys, make sure to tune in to My Two Cents in a Sip podcast hosted by Yvonne Misiaya on Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts. We are speaking of all things women, entertainment, celebrities, reality TV, giving advice, random advice, answering some couples questions and all about women's situations. Tune in again to My Two Cents in a Sip podcast on Spotify or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. No tea, no wine, no shade. It's My Two Cents. Now sip.